Okay, hey gang, it's uh, Phil Goyat here from the Phil of Games channel. And uh, sorry for the delay on this one, but I'm continuing my series of a playthrough of Fire in the Lake, um, which is the GMT Games coin series take on the war in Vietnam. And uh, I'm, I'm doing a playthrough to show everybody uh, how to play with the different options available to each faction to show you kind of an example of how those options work. Um, and we're to the coup round now. And uh, I do apologize for the, the delay on this one. What uh, I'll, I'll get sidetracked for a second. We had Thanksgiving, so I had to knock down my uh, gaming table here because we needed it to host Thanksgiving dinner here in Dublin. Uh, and then I set the game back up after Thanksgiving uh, and I played up to another coup round, and actually the VC won at the coup round that time, so I've since knocked the game down and set it back up again. Uh, I'm playing the full campaign game, starting with the 1964 car event cards and starting the game in 1964. One tip, if you're playing the full campaign, is that the VC are in a very strong position at the start of the campaign scenario. And because of that, if you want to make it past the first coup phase, the uh, U.S. and Arvin players really need to cooperate. And you probably can't do anything, no messing about, um, until you've swept and eliminated the majority of the VC from the board. Because the VC is just in a great position. They're spread out. And they have a lot of uh, locations that they can terror. And score like between five and 10 victory points in one operations round. So just bear that in mind. Anyway, get back on track, Phil. All right, so what we're gonna do is the coup round. So we drew our coup card. Uh, it's the failed attempt. And we have the little reminder, you can put it on the, oops, sorry for bouncing. You can put on the coup card there. It's the monsoon effect, um, which limits what you can do on the card before the coup. So now we're going to work through the coup card on the sequence of play. We're going to show you what you do in a coup phase. And this is a good thing to get a grasp on when you're first playing the game because um, until you see the coup round happen, you don't realize how the game state and map state can change. So the first thing you do is you check for victory. And there's also a little coup card tracker down here if you wanted to work through that to make sure that you were doing everything. Um, I tend to just go down on the player aid here. It has everything you need to do. So... And generally, you probably just want to put one person in charge of running the coup card if you're playing with four players. Um, but the first thing you do is the victory phase. So if any faction has met victory conditions, the game ends. See victory 7.2. We're tracking the victory uh, as we play. And while the VC got close, two points away from their automatic win condition of 36, um, the U.S. was able to stop them from winning the game, basically, on the on the last operations round. So nobody's hit victory yet, so we're done with that section. Uh, and next we add resources. So first, sabotage locks lines of communication with more insurgent than coin pieces or adjacent to a non-coin controlled city. Okay, let's do the first part of the or. Locks with more insurgent than coin pieces. So when we look on the map, the... Uh, VC and MVA have marked some insurgents onto some lines of communications, and those are going to get sabotaged as a consequence because there are more. So here you can see on this lock, which is Route 14 coming out of Saigon into Cambodia, uh, we've got two VC and one MVA piece and no coin pieces. So you put a little sabotage marker down on that lock to remind you. And then the same deal with the Mekong River. We have one VC hanging out controlling the river with no coin. So we're gonna put a sabotage down there. So we've sabotaged our locks. Now there's an or in this section and my group actually didn't play this correctly the first couple times we've played, it's easy to miss. So first you sabotage the little locks where you have more insurgents than coin pieces. Then you sabotage locks that are adjacent to a non coin controlled city, right? So there was a situation uh, in this round that I played where Da Nang actually was not coin controlled for a moment. If Da Nang had not been coin controlled, what the, like, so say these guys aren't there. So then there's no coin control in Da Nang. What that section means is you actually are gonna sabotage then this lock route one coming south out of Da Nang, this lock route one coming north out of Da Nang, 
and then the Route 14 lock coming west out of Da Nang. Because there's no coin control in the city, each lock adjacent to that city gets sabotaged. Right, so that's something you want to keep in mind strategically, and it's easy to miss because of how uh, it's written up on the coup card sequence of play. But bear that in mind, if the coin faction does not control a city, the locks adjacent to that city are going to get sabotaged as well. Okay, does it apply in our game? So we're done with sabotage. Next, you degrade the trail, so the trail box by the NVA player. If any Laos or Cambodia space is coin controlled. Well, that's not the case in our game right now. So we can skip that one. Uh, and the trail stays up at four for now. Then add resources as follows. So the Arvin gets the total econ. So it's 15 minus econ of sabotage locks. All right. So they start with 15 econ, which is marked on the marker. But you got to subtract one for this lock, which has been sabotaged, and subtract one for this lock, which has been sabotaged. So that makes 13. So 15 minus 2 is 13. Uh, and then plus aid. So aid is up here 29 and 13 uh, more, right? Because our econ went down from 15 down to 13. So we adjust that. So 13 and 29, 44. So. You take the Arvin resources marker and drop it on 44. Okay? Sorry, 42. And my math is terrible. 13 and 29, 42. Okay, so that means the Arvin player's got 42 resources to start the next round with. The NVA player then... Oh, and then you adjust the total econ marker. So you make sure that you drop the econ by the two sabotaged locks down to 13. Which means their econ base for the next round is only going to be 13. Okay? For the Arvin player. Uh, and then the NVA player takes the number of bases in Laos and Cambodia plus two times the trail value in resources. So, NVA player's got one, two, three, four, five. So, excuse me, four. I'm counting North Vietnam there. NBA. Let me double check that. Number of bases in Laos and Cambodia. I've probably played this rule wrong too before. Uh, so Parrot's Beak, one, two, that's down in Cambodia. And then Southern Laos has a base three and Central Laos has a base four. So they get four resources for those. So that goes up to 15 resources now from 11. And then they get two times the trail. The NVA focus on bulking up the Ho Chi Minh Trail in the first turn. And so two times uh, four, because the trail marker is at four now, is eight more resources, which is nice. So they're actually looted. NVA's now got 23. Okay, that's NVA resources added. Then the VC gets just the number of their bases and resources. And that's easy to track because in the available forces base, if you pull from the higher numbers, so that's number seven, we know that we have six on the map because it's listed here. And so we just add six money to the VC from zero up to six. Okay. And then finally, subtract three times the number of casualty pieces from aid. Well, the U.S. had no casualties, thank God, that first round. So there's no deduction from aid. So the aid's going to remain up at 29. Okay. So that is the resources done. Now we conduct the support part. Uh, the U.S. player, then the Arvin player, may pacify... A combined total of up to four spaces with, now this is like a recipe, you need coin control, police, and one of your own troops in a space in order to do a pacification in the coup phase. All right. Every three Arvin resources spent first removes any terror marker from a space, or once there's no terror, shifts one level toward active support. Up to two levels per space in this phase. So basically, you can spend up to six resources to do two shifts in any one space that has coin control, has police, and has one of your own troops in it. And the U.S. player goes first. So we'll, we'll take our pawns and we'll decide where can we do this. Uh, Saigon is a gimme. So there's, so you can see U.S. troop, police, and coin control, right? So we can do Saigon and that's going to give us a big bump in support. So we're doing that one first. And then you just kind of scan the map to see where else there's U.S. troops. Kian Fong, I put him there on purpose. 
uh, on an airlift with that police officer there so we can start nicking away at the VC support there. Uh, bin Din we cannot do because it does not have coin control. Kuang Tree does have coin control, so that's an option. Uh, Plaiku, no coin control, so we can't do it there. Kuang Tin has a U.S. troop, a police, and a coin control, so we can do it there. So we're definitely doing it there for two. Uh, and so we got one more space. You can do up a total of four. Uh, so we will do Kuang Tree for the fourth. Okay. And then in each, you're going to spend uh, three of the Arvin resources, which are on 42, for uh, each level that you change. So we'll start in Kuang Tree first. And... There's no terror to remove, which is great. So you spend three to remove an opposition. Because we move the opposition, you got to remember to knock the VC down by two, one, two, because they lose opposition points there. And the US player then, for another three, can add passive support. And that means their support and available score goes up to one, two. And that's going to cost six total. So the 42 goes down one, two, three, four, five, six, down to 36. Okay, so that's Quang Tree done. Kuang Tin, you're going to be able to spend six and remove both levels of opposition, which is going to drop two times two, drop the opposition points for the VC by four down to 28. Uh, US doesn't gain any support, but they have removed the opposition there. And then we spend our six money there down to 30. Uh, Saigon. Can only move up one level because we're already at passive support, but that's all right. So now we double the six population in Saigon uh, by paying just three resources. And that's going to move the support up six points for the U.S. player up to 43. So now we're sitting pretty. Um, and then finally, Ken Fong. Again, no terror added there. So we get more bang for our book. We're going to move both levels of active opposition from Ken Fong. So that's one, two, it's going to cost us six down to 21. And that means two times two, four opposition is lost by the VC. One, two, three, four. Okay. So that is how the U S player does their pacification. Then after the pacification is done in the support phase, the VC player gets to agitate in up to four spaces without any coin control and any VC present. So I'm gonna show you how to do that one here next. All right, so first we're gonna get our pawns and figure out where do we wanna do this. So no coin control, VC present, and we're looking for locations where we can move toward opposition. The problem is the VC has maxed out just about everything. Um, you can see active oppose, active oppose times two. So doing uh, um, agitation in those spaces won't, won't get us anywhere. However, up in Quang, oh, Quang Tree's got coin control, so we can't agitate there. So the coin forces has shut off the map for agitation effectively to the VC. So that's something you want to keep in mind when you're playing through the game is that how can you set stuff up in the coup round so that you can kind of shut off some point scoring for your opponents. Okay, so no agitation is available for the VC in this round, but agitation works just like pacification does, just in reverse. So it moves the space toward opposition. Uh, okay, and then, actually, you know what? Missed a step. Um, when, before the victory, at the very first step, you're actually supposed to um, enact the effects of the coup card. So, this one is a failed coup attempt, um, and it means the result is desertion. So the Arvin player removes one and three of its cubes per space, rounded down. Okay, so, and place below any RVN leader card... I don't know if Duong Van Min counts as a leader card or not. I'll have to look that up, actually. So that means the first thing we needed to do was actually remove one and three rounded down of Arvin pieces in any spaces, which couldn't impact the coin control of those spaces. So uh, bear with me, folks. Saigon, 
That's Arvin Cubes, is that correct? Yeah, one in, the failed attempt is one and three of Arvin Cubes. So Saigon, we only have two cubes and two cylinders. We don't have to remove anything. Uh, Tainan, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, meaning we've got to remove two. So we'll remove two of the troops out of Tainan. One, two, three, four, five, six. Arvin still controls Tainan, so coin's still in place there. But something to keep in mind, uh, we got two and on lock. So nobody has to get removed there. Two in Kamran, one in Kanhoa, one Fuban, two Kinan. So far, so good, actually. Uh, binned in here. Only two cubes, one cylinder. Da Nang has six, so we got to remove two. Uh, it's player's choice, but you tend to want to remove one of each strategically. Um, and those are the only spaces that will be impacted by that. So uh, no impact, but you have to remember to enact the coup result of the new coup card first before you go in through the, in through the steps of the coup card round. Okay, so keep that in mind. Um, and then you redeploy. So after we've done victory, check for victory, added resources, done the support phase, which is pacification and agitation, we then redeploy. So we ad adjust control only after completing these redeployments. First, remove all U.S. Arvin pieces from Laos and Cambodia. U.S. troops go to other, out of play, others go to available. There's none right now in Laos or Cambodia, but if they were, they come out now. Okay, so you have to keep that in mind. The U.S. player can't leave pieces sitting outside of Vietnam. Uh, then Arvin must move its troops from lines of communication and provinces without U.S. or Arvin bases. Okay, so we'll do that first. Where do we have pieces without U.S. or Arvin troops? Sorry, where do we have Arvin troops in locations without U.S. or Arvin bases? And we'll just mark them with the pawns because that's the easiest way to do it. Uh, Ken Gang has a troop. No base, Kian Fong, same deal, troop, no base. Tain in, I put a base on purpose, so these troops are able to stay in Tain in and hold that province. And generally, you want to put Arvin bases in provinces, never in cities, for that reason. Makes sense. Uh, Bin Din, we've got a U.S. base there, so that troop can stay. In Quang Tri, we've got a U.S. base there, so that troop can stay. Uh, and then troops can stay in the cities. All right, so we only have two we have to remove. So we'll pull them off. It's not going to cost us coin control in either location either, which is nice. Uh, so they must be removed. Sorry, they must move them. And then you can move any other Arvin troops you'd like to city, either cities without NVA control. Okay, every city on the board right now is available. Doesn't have, There's no NVA control in any city, so we can move them to any city. Or any U.S. or Arvin bases. So those base locations, which we might actually think about doing, or Saigon. So you can always pull troops back into Saigon, which we also might think about doing. Tricky, tricky. Uh, so what we're going to do is add, add a troop to Tain in where we have our Arvin base because we're going to focus on holding that. Uh, and then we're going to add the other troop that we had to move. Oh, boy. Two, three, four, five, six. Two, three, four, five, six. And the bin den will give us control. So we're going to do that. Set them down in bin den, which adds a seventh coin piece to bin den, which is going to give us control of bin den, which is nice. Um, so we don't adjust that control yet. You adjust it at the end of all the redeployments. Okay. Arvin then may move any police to any locks or coin control within South Vietnam. So now you can move your police cubes around the map uh, to reset stuff if you like. I kind of liked how I had them set up, so I am thinking about it, but I don't think I want to move any cops anywhere. I got two in Da Nang, it might be a little super, superfluous. Oh, no, 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 no. Tricky game, every decision counts in this game too. Okay, we're just gonna leave them as they are, but you can see it's something to think about. Okay, so that's the Arvin redeployment completed and now the nva player may move nva troops from any spaces to any nva bases NVA, nva player actually has no troops on the board yet i know so we don't have to worry about that one but if they did they could move them around to locations where their nva bases are 
So that is a benefit to having an NVA base in the south is that you can, if you can get that foothold, you can kind of rearrange your troops at the coup phase round. So that's something else to keep in mind when you're playing as the NVA player. Um, then adjust all control. Okay, that's cool. Um, we're just going to add coin control then to bend in, which was gained in this phase. It's two points, one, two. So the Arvin player's coin and patronage is up to 48 now. Then the game end. If the final round return, uh, determine victory, well, to not. So if not, conduct commitment and reset. Okay, not the final game turn. So now we're going to get into the commitment phase and then reset the board so we can start playing again. Uh, commitment, you skip if it's the final round. This is not the final round. If non-player U.S., check U.S. policy. Uh, we're not doing that. The U.S. player is an active player. Then one in three U.S. troops and all base casualties out of play. U.S. had no casualties um, in this campaign round. But if, if they were, they would one in three of them would move from casualties over to the out of play box. Okay. Um, U.S. places other U.S. troop. Sorry. All irregular casualties go to available. So any irregular... Uh, which are the cylinders that you had in the casualty box, so just go back into the available box. Um, so the uh, U.S. led irregular cylinders are more expendable than the troop cubes. Then the U.S. places other U.S. troop casualties into any coin control spaces, line of communications, or into Saigon. Okay? Uh, we're not going to place any, but that's where they would go if you had them left over. Um then the U.S. may move troops totaling up to 10, minus the number of casualties just placed. So you've got to keep track of how many pieces you move from the casualties box to the map previously in the redeployment phase. In this case, it's 0. So 10 minus 0 is still, is still 10, plus up to 2 U.S. bases among available, which is up here is your available box. Any coin control, any locks, and Saigon. And then adjust control. For every two U.S. pieces, rounded down, that move from the map over to the available box. So if you're going to recall pieces from the map back to the U.S. or draw down the troop commitment in order to bump up your available points, available forces points... Um, if you do that, for every two pieces that get moved to available, the VC gets to shift one population by one level toward opposition, max one shift per space. So in the event you start drawing down your troops, it gives the VC an opportunity to start adding opposition to the population who are saying, why are the U.S. forces leaving us? We need them. Okay. Uh, so that's how the U.S. commitment phase works. Uh, I guess to summarize it, what you're doing here is rearranging your U.S. forces. This is the point in the game where you can either move forces from the map over to available, or you can move forces from available over to the map. And it's also a situation where you can uh, redeploy your bases, okay, which is also um, very important strategically in the game because bases hit... Uh, land two hits for every one U.S. troop cube located at a base. And really what you want to be doing is using your bases to hold the highlands, which are the hardest places to hold generally, which is what we're going to do. So first thing the U.S. is going to do is uh, deploy two bases from available, which we're allowed to do up to two. So two bases from available to any coin control. So one is going to go in Kanhoa highlands, boop, to help hold Kanhoa. One's going into Quang Nam, again, highlands to hold Quang Nam. Now, the bases aren't very effective without a U.S. troop cube to shoot with. So we're also going to deploy one, two of our available forces. One in Quang Nam, one in Kanhoa, so one to each base. Okay, and because we, we, we pulled down uh, our available, we added more troops to South Vietnam. We're going to lose two points in the process. Okay. Um, and... The other thing the U.S. player can do at this point is move bases around that are on the map already. 
Sorry, you can only do two total though. So now I need to think about this again. Plus, can move plus up to two US bases. So we're gonna put the two bases down. Um, and then the next coup phase, what we'll be looking to do is take this base out of Saigon and move it to a better location on the map for some more hitting power somewhere. Okay. Um, and then we can actually reposition our US forces as well. So in Quang Tin, we had assembled a little hit squad. Um, but they can be moved around. To any coin control space on the map which we're now going to think about doing with them because number one they're exposed uh, and number two they're not really accomplishing anything so we're going to pull those three guys out of Quang Tin and reposition them uh, and we really want them in spaces with police where we can look to do some pacification so into the Delta Ken Hoa will get a piece um, the other thing you want to think about is popping them in cities like Hue, which is a two population city. So we'll pop one in Hue and maybe we'll use these guys to help hold Fuban, uh, which is sort of out of, ooh, Boshwain. We're going to put them in Boshwain where we don't have any support yet and hope to gain some support there. Okay, so lots of decisions. You can see when you go through the coup phase, there's actually lots of strategic gameplay decisions to be made for each of the factions, but especially the coin factions. So that's why hopefully this video will be helpful. You can see it run through once before you go to play the game. But anyway, so that's the US commitment phase done. Uh, and now we reset. You skip if it's the final round. Well, it's not. Uh, if the trail's at zero, improve it to one. Well, it's not. If the trail's at four, degrade it to three. Ah, it is. So the NVA gets bumped down a little bit. They lose all their free marching in and out of Laos, Cambodia for now. Uh, but they're going to be working on keeping the trail high, especially as they get their troops on the board. And that's something that the U.S. player really needs to be thinking about uh, in this next campaign phase. So the trail is done. Remove terror and sabotage. So you literally just take the terror sabotage markers off the map. That all gets reset. Uh, we had plenty because the VC was running around terrorizing the map, trying to gain victory in that first campaign phase, which is, I still think is the right way for the VC player to play because they're in such a strong position off the bat. Uh, so terror and sabotage are removed. All guerrillas and special forces go underground. So anybody revealed gets flipped. I won't show you doing that, but I'm going to do it. Uh, you discard any momentum cards which we did not have any momentum cards played, so they wouldn't have to worry about that. But if you did, you take the momentum effects out of play. The capabilities would remain in play. The momentum effects would be taken out of play. Uh, and then all your factions are gonna go to eligible. And then play next card. So you get rolling again, and we're into our second campaign phase. So we're gonna flip two more cards and see what we get here. Colonel Chow, census grievance teams, and uh, oh, the Fulbright hearing, Senator Fulbright. Hear hearings stoke debate. So that's it. That's a coup phase completed. That means you're on to go, ready to go on to the second campaign round. I'm going to leave this set up for the next couple days until we need it for Christmas stuff, probably. <laughs> uh, but as I play through, when I get to some options off the old trusty menus that we haven't seen yet, I'll try to make a little video showing you how to uh, employ those options. But that's the walkthrough of how to conduct a coup phase in GNT Games Fire in the Lake by Mark Herman and Volkoronki. Hope you enjoyed and stay tuned for some more videos. Thanks.